Hey guys, Thunder E here. And as you know, there are a ton of mobile controllers out there. And it's good to see that mobile gaming has taken a huge leap. Now this, I gotta give a big shout out to Microsoft because of Xbox Game Pass. That was one of the biggest pushes for mobile controllers out there. So shout out to them. But we're trying to find out which is the best one. Now I said earlier, there are many controllers out there on the market. There's some super cheap ones, more expensive, and the general price range for most of these controllers are roughly around $99 to like 150. Now, what controllers do we have here to do this battle? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven controllers here uh, from a couple of manufacturers that you know quite well. So let's take a look at the controllers we have. So first off, we have the Turtle Beach Atom. Now the Atom controller here is a Bluetooth controller and what I like it is really compact and also splits open and you can go ahead and uh, carry this in a pouch, very nifty altogether. Now on one side, you've got your thumbsticks, your D-pad, uh, you've got of course your triggers, your shoulders. On the other side, X, Y, B, A button. Of course, the layout is a split layout diagonal across and there are no customizable buttons at the back of the controller. So standard and this connects via bluetooth if you're wondering where's the usb connector it's a bluetooth controller but what i like about this controller is that this is super portable you can take it anywhere with you um, and you can pack it up and it's got a very nice compact nature for the atom so that's the atom there next off of course is the backbone controller which has a many variants and to me the variant i do like the most is the post malone variant i like this neon green color uh but they all look like this there's a playstation variant as well um and you've got the split uh of course uh thumbsticks your d-pad xyba then of course your other buttons as well as the backbone button it does expand out and has a usb type c port uh, and then of course, shoulder buttons. There are no customizable buttons on here. Of course, you can still see the Post Malone uh, logo at the back, which is pretty cool. I like the look of this controller. Now, next off is from Asus. This is the Asus Tessin. This is a re it's relatively new controller. Now, what I like about this controller is the fact that uh, the D-pad feels very nice. It feels very actuated, which is good for those Hadoukens. Uh, the thumbsticks are, of course, split diagonal. You have, of course, your similar option control buttons x y b a you've got your shoulders and triggers and even have a customizable button on the back so there are more buttons for of course gamers who want to take things to that next level but also this is a super portable controller usb type c connector you can see it extends out and in you can place your phone there and it folds this is pretty nifty i do like this makes it more portable to carry around if you want to actually put it into your luggage you don't have to slide it in this way doesn't come with a carrying case or pouch, which is something I wish they did, but I do like this compact nature of the controller. And of course has RGB lighting all across when we turn it on. Now, one thing to note about the controllers is that they work for any device that fits in a USB Type-C port, which includes your iPhone and your Galaxy uh, series. So basically either the S24 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max. The big boys will also fit into all the controllers you actually see here. Now, we have one from Scuffs. Scuffs is well known for their gaming controllers and they have a portable one here. Sadly, it is Bluetooth, but uh, the layout is very interesting. You've got a reverse PlayStation layout with your thumbsticks all, all linear at the top. D-pad is at the bottom, X, Y, B, buttons, command, control buttons, options. You've got, of course, your thumb, your shoulders and your triggers. And then there's a customizable M1 and M2 at the back. Slides open to fit your device. And at first I had my doubts with this, uh, but if you're playing a shooter and most of course, most likely you're gonna have your shoot buttons here, the thumbstick, you're gonna have most of your buttons mapped here, you can map the rest of the back and you really don't need your X, Y, B, A buttons. This is pretty good. And the spacing is nice, especially with your smartphone in the middle. So that actually works out well. A USB uh, port here to charge it because there's Bluetooth and the Bluetooth button. Nice look, comes in black and white. So this is pretty nifty as well. Now, moving to the side here, we have the Razer Kishi Ultra. I did a video on this. I really like this uh, controller, uh, especially the actuated uh, D-pad, which feels super comfortable playing Street Fighter, absolutely comfortable. And also the thumbsticks are split diagonal has a really nice um, control to it. You've got your XYB buttons, 
USB type C as well. And then you've got uh, your shoulders, your triggers. There's a customizable L4 and R4 and that's it. Nothing at the back. This though will expand to fit in something like an iPad. You can see how much longer it is in terms of just the width, which is nice to see from uh, Razer. And that's of course price at 159. Price is on screen as you've already seen. Now, GameStar is well known for making mobile controllers and I really like their offerings here. So this is the GameStar G8. Uh, its layout feels like an Xbox controller. You kind of look at it, you can see how it looks on the sides, very reminiscent, feels super comfortable. I really like that feel to it. You've got, uh, of course, a USB uh, port here for USB connectivity, split uh, thumbsticks, your D-pad feels really nice, XYBA buttons. Of course, some function buttons on the surface here. You've got your shoulders, your triggers, and a remappable button at the back, which is pretty nice. Now there's a USB port here uh, for pass-through charging, headphone jack, which is cool. And it also slides open to fit your large smartphones. And uh, you do have the ability to go ahead and snap it open and swap out the thumbsticks for whichever ones you want. So they have a couple of different options. This is pretty nice, allowing you to just kind of fit it in and then, you know, use it. But make sure you plug it in correctly or else you'll be like me, where now you're fiddling around and it actually doesn't fit in well. Boom. There we go. Magnetic, pretty nice. Works for both sides as well. You can do the same thing here too. Boom. Now the final controller is also from GameSaw. This is the GameSaw G8 Plus. Now the reason why it's called the Plus is because it also fits a much larger device like the iPad mini. Now, this also has the same layout, very Xbox-like. Your diagonal thumb pads, you've got a nice T-pad, XYB buttons, function buttons, shoulder, triggers, and remappable buttons here. But this doesn't have USB Type-C. And this also is something you can split open and uh, customize the button, the thumb still layout. Now, before we jump into which I like the most or best, let's look at, at these two big boys, the ones that support the iPad mini, because not a lot of controllers support a device like this. The iPad mini is a great gaming device, uh, really powerful to play all the games you want to play, whether it's Call of Duty Warzone, whether it's something like Genshin Impact. Now, with the GameSide G8 Plus, you simply just slide it in, boom, and done. That's it. It fits your iPad, and there you go. That's what it looks like. Straightforward. There is no USB Type-C port connector. You can remap the buttons with the software. It's pretty straightforward uh, and it's pretty easy to use. That's it. Now, what about the Razer Kishi? Kishi also will fit the iPad, although it will connect to the USB Type-C port. This is one where you have to basically gently slide it in and boom, there you go. Also will fit your Razer Kishi right here, which is pretty cool. So you get the idea and you can see the light, it does light up with the RGB lighting, which is also pretty nice here. Now, when I look at both of them, I do like the way they actually handle. I feel like uh, the GameStar does a really good job, though um, it feels sturdier than the Kishi. I think just because of the broader base here at the back gives it a much more comfortable feel while holding the device, while the Kishi, as you can see, is much more slim and streamlined. When it comes to controls and usability, though, I do like the D-pad on the Kishi and the thumbsticks, they feel really nice. Uh, this is very gamer-centric uh, for me, and also just the relay of the buttons. There's nothing wrong with the GameStar, it works out pretty well, but also the fact that this has USB Type-C connectivity, to me goes a whole long way, which means my buttons uh, presses are close to um, real-time as possible, especially when I'm playing the shooter like Call of Duty Warzone here. So. You definitely get the idea. Moving over to the controllers that fit regular phones or anything as large as the Galaxy S24 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I'm just going to set aside all the ones with USB Type-C connectors here on the right because at my number five spot is the Atom. The Atom is pretty good. I do like this nifty uh, functionality here. The D-pad is okay. The thumbsticks are fine. Our software is a bit janky on here. And even though this is collapsible, it still can feel a little bit bulky um, overall. And this is also a Bluetooth controller. This is why that is at the number five spot because it's Bluetooth connectivity, similar to the number four spot, scuffs. 
Now the Scuf Nomad here is really solid. The thumbsticks are nice and the D-pad is also very usable. I do like, again, that reverse PlayStation layout that allows me to play shooters pretty effectively, but it's a Bluetooth controller. I think that's where I have my limitations to it right there. Software is pretty good. That allows for real great customization overall, um, but it takes the number five spot. Okay, moving over to my number three spot is the Backbone, the, of course, Post Malone version. I know, Backbone has had a really good control of of things here within this space. Um, I like the fact this USB Type-C connector. What I don't like is the D-pad. It is very stiff in terms of, you know, playing shooters. Also, the thumbsticks have, don't have a lot of travel. They kind of bounce back pretty quickly. You can hear that. Uh, the triggers are fine. Uh, what I really love with Backbone is their software. The software is very smooth, very reliable. I do like the added headphone jack and the USB Type-C port and also the different colored variants they do have. Then next off is the Asus Tessin. Now, this is the lightest of all the controllers. I love the fact that this is collapsible. You can carry it around, but because it's no provided case with it, or at least there's none that I've, I've seen that actually fits, it almost makes no sense to do this, but I do like the fact that you can collapse it down. And I do like the weight of this controller. I also like the programmable buttons on the back. I like the paddle nature of it it feels very xbox pro controller x to me which is nice um, also the d-pad is actuated which is also very good allows for some good functionality same thing with the thumbsticks just good travel good bounce back and the triggers have some weight too so when you're playing the shooter it actually feels you're going through software is decent not as of great as say the backbone but it's still decent enough software and my number one spot goes to the G8. Now, the G8 is a really solid controller. I like just the Xbox look. It reminds me of a controller I'm very used to using. It's not the most portable in terms of size, but it's still portable enough. I do like the fact that the back plate is flat and covers most of the space of your smartphone, so it doesn't feel flimsy when holding it. D-pad is good. It's not an actuated D-pad, but it's still a solid D-pad. There's good travel on the thumbsticks, and the shoulders are good and it's also USB Type-C, but it also has a, I don't know if you guys can see this clearly, uh, a movable USB Type-C port, so it tilts up or down, allowing it to fit any smartphone properly, and you don't have to use those base plates or things like that underneath. It's just a really solid control overall, great performance, and I think, to be fair, all of them are good. If the Razer Kishi Ultra wasn't just built for multiple sizes, this actually would be my number one because everything works well here. And Razer's done a good job improving the uh, software on here. But that goes to GameStop. But anyway, let me know what you think, guys. This has been a super long video. I know, I apologize. But just give me an idea of what gaming will look like on these controllers. They're all awesome, honestly. Anything you see on this table is still worth buying, but that's just my ranking. So if you have any questions, any comments, let me know. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy your entertainment.